Hi guys, today we're going to talk about two movies and two series that are launching this month and we'll get to that right after this. The beginning of a new year is when many people start thinking about their goals and I'm no exception. Uh, the Goal Process 101 ebook has helped me clarify the best and most achievable goals for me, uh, plus helped me set a plan in place to accomplish them. I mean, this podcast is just one of the results of using the Goal Process 101 ebook. Uh, check it out at christiannerdsunite.com slash goals. It helped me. I'm sure it can help you too. Now, back to the show. We're going to dive right in with some scripture really fast. I want to read Luke 10, 1 through 3. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I send you out like lambs among wolves. Now, Jesus started a team here. Um, <clears throat> he started a team early on. Uh, even though he was God incarnate, he had a team. Um, he had the three closest disciples, Peter, James, and John, sometimes referred to as the three um, the closest disciples in many ways. Then he had the 12 disciples he called uh, directly along his travels. Um, the, you know, the ones we're most familiar with. Uh, you know, they're listed in the Gospels. Um, they go out preaching with him. Um, they're dedicated. And uh, we see them depicted in, in paintings like uh, Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Uh, then we have the 70, or the 72, as it's listed here, uh, a large group of disciples. Uh, we don't have all of their names, but they were sent out in this verse, uh, these verses, and we just read about it. And um, eventually, we have you and me. You know, we're on Jesus's team. Uh, we're part of that team, if we're willing. And uh helping to share the gospel where we are and and when we can to the other most parts of the world. Uh, I personally get to help do this by training indigenous leaders in other countries in how to locate seekers digitally. Um, it's amazing that we live in this time and age with the technology we have that from right here in my home office, I can help people halfway around the world, impact people with the gospel. My prayer every day is that I can just be a small part of what God and his spirit is doing in the world. And I believe you can too. Even if it's at your work or in your neighborhood, you know, just right next door. I pray that you are on God's team and spreading the good news as well. Well, we're going to look at, like I said, two movies and two films. Uh, so let's look at some nerdy stuff that might kind of fit in with this whole team idea that I, I was just talking about. Um, I think some will be more obvious than others. So let's start out with number one and probably the least obvious one. Uh, we are going to see Godzilla vs. Kong uh, in theaters and on HBO Max on March 31st. And uh, I know a lot of people in the Christian Nerds Unite page, uh, the group, are super excited about Godzilla and Kong. Um, the monster movies have never been a huge part of 
who I've been over the last few years. Uh, when I was a young kid, I watched all the Godzilla movies back in the 70s, and I loved them. I thought they were absolutely fantastic. Um, somewhat ridiculous, but, you know, I was young, and I thought it was really cool. Now, just bear with me on this whole team-up thing, okay? We know this is an Adam Wingard film, and we know this is supposed to be the big fight, Godzilla versus King Kong. And, uh, you know, the big monsters aren't the only attraction here. We have a, a team of humans that are running around down below. We've got actors like Alexander Skarsgård. We've got Rebecca Hall. We've got Demin Blacher. Um, you know, so there's, there's a great cast of characters here. And uh, I'm sure this will be a fun movie. Um, now, here's where I go. Is this, a, is this a team? You know, at first, it's supposed to be an adversarial movie. And that is definitely what the trailers are trying to sell us. But a lot of people are conjecturing that this is not really Godzilla versus King Kong. This is something else going on. Because... Although traditionally, you know, even back through the, the 60s and 70s, you know, in the 80s, uh, Godzilla has kind of vacillated between being a bad guy and a hero. Um, the, uh, the idea here, a lot of people are suggesting that the initial Godzilla that we see, the one that they bring King Kong in to fight, is not going to be the real Godzilla. Uh, is this a mecha Godzilla? Is this a mind controlled Godzilla? We don't know yet. Uh, but a lot of people are conjecturing that we're going to see an, the real Godzilla show up later and we'll see Kong and Godzilla team up to defeat whatever this is, this, this thing that is the bad guy. Now, whether that is if we've got a mind controlled Godzilla, does he break loose of this mind control and then they destroy whatever this organization is that was causing the problem all along? Or do we have a mechanized Godzilla that we're going to see a real Godzilla get to fight against? I don't know, uh, but we really only have a couple of weeks before we'll find out. Now, next, Zack Schneider's Justice League. I'm really looking forward to this, and and uh, you know it's the uh, when I'm releasing this, it's the it's March 16th, and uh, this is actually just coming out in just a few days. So uh, it's going to be super exciting coming out on Thursday, March 18th. Um, the project basically willed into existence by an online fan movement hashtag release the Snyder cut. Um, you know, Zack Snyder's Justice League, we find the director returning uh, back to DC Comics and uh, to see if he can recreate or, or create for the first time what he originally envisioned for this film. Now, um, we finally have a, a finished film that uh, that is just Snyder's ideas. Uh, you know, the original thera theatrical cut, uh, we see, you know, Snyder have to step away because of some uh, a family tragedy. And we see Josh Whedon come in, do a lot of reshoots, uh, you know, rewrite a lot of things that make the movie feel a little disjunct. Uh, it doesn't seem to connect as well. Uh, trying to make it slightly lighter than it originally was intended to be, which I, I don't have a problem with lighthearted films. Um, but when you've got all this footage that's super dark and, and super gritty, and then you've got someone who comes in later and tries to lighten it up, it can seem kind of odd and disjointed. And I think that's really what happened here. Uh, now, the Snyder Cut is going to be a reworked, four-hour spectacle, um, what we're hoping to see. Uh, we're hoping to see the um, 
what the first release was supposed to be. That's what we're hoping for. A, a movie worthy of a series of sequels, you know, of solo movies, of uh, another Justice League movie. That's what we're hoping for. Now, as far as the other Justice League movies, now, we we do know that this is going to end on a cliffhanger. Um, that is not much of a spoiler, uh, because it's been pretty well announced everywhere that this is going to end in a cliffhanger. Now, what that cliffhanger is, how that works, is it going to be a post-credit scene, you know, that the kind of the, the Marvel Thanos kind of thing? I'm not sure exactly yet what that's going to be. The critics have already seen it, uh, and they've already weighed in, and I'll get to that here in a few moments. But, um, I'm doubtful that we're going to see a real, a true sequel that Snyder's going to be able to come back and create a second Justice League movie that continues the series on simply because, you know, Affleck is stepping out of the Cape and Cal. However, it is rumored he is coming back for the Flash movie, so maybe there's hope there. Um, the rumor mill has it that the next Superman is going to be a reboot. A, a brand new Superman casting. Uh, so that, you know, brings some uh, question there as to, to how that would fit in to a new Zack Snyder Justice League in the future. Now, that's kind of an interesting story, and I, I'm going to chase that rabbit trail for just a minute. A lot of people are saying that this Superman reboot that they're talking about may have a, an African-American Superman. It's a super interesting idea. Now, what does that mean when we say an African-American Superman? Now, in the comics, we've seen that at least once. Uh, and we saw it during the, the death of Superman. We saw four characters come back to replace Superman when he had died. None of them were really Superman. All of them had different characteristics. And one, very specifically was a, a African-American man, uh, and he went by the name of Steel, as in Man of Steel. And he was in this metal outfit. If that sounds familiar to filmgoers, uh, there was a really horrible Shaquille O'Neal movie called Steel that was definitely supposed to be this character, but it definitely wasn't. It was bad. It wasn't a... It, no, just don't. Don't go there. Um, could we get a good Steel movie? Maybe. Uh, it could be interesting to to slide in a, a really good Steel movie into that gap where uh, between uh, Batman v Superman and Justice League lie. And uh, we've got a time period where you could fit that in as a, a Rise of Superman. Uh, a rise of the Superman, except we only have the one. We have Steel. Uh, so that's one option. We could have a straight-up after African-American Superman, which I'm fine with that. Uh, could be interesting. We've got an... He's an alien anyway. Uh, what says he has to be, you know, white and from Kansas? Why can't he be an African-American guy from Chicago? Um, could be interesting to see what they would do with that. Uh, now, another option, and I think this would be brilliant, actually. Do a real change-up. We said, okay, we're recasting, we're rebooting Superman, and then decide, no, you know what, we're not going to reboot Superman. We're simply going to go with a Milestone Comics character, which was basically the Milestone version of Superman, and his name was Icon. If you're not familiar with Milestone, back in the mid-90s, there was a DC spin-off uh, imprint at, called Milestone. All of the comics from Milestone were written by African-American uh, writers, uh, dr drawn by African-American artists, and all contained African-American characters. Now, for those of you who are a little bit younger and maybe you ran into a cartoon that you enjoyed called Static Shock uh, about a, uh, a electric superhero who was African-American cartoons in the early 2000s. 
Um, he is actually a character from the milestone period. So uh, that's that's maybe your connection there. But they had, there was a character named Icon, which was basically the, the Superman of Milestone. Uh, that would be an, a fascinating way to do it. And if they did that, they would actually have an opportunity to create a milestone universe of superheroes uh, because there are a lot of interesting characters there that could be used. I would love to see something like that. I don't know if Warner Brothers is adventurous enough to try to pull that off, but it would be great. Uh, now, we do know we're going to see Jared Leto's Joker in this new Justice League cut. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a dream sequence of sorts, so it's not exactly the Joker, but it's not exactly not the Joker. Um, we are going to get a reworked Steppenwolf, and he does look amazing in the trailers. So much better CGI than we saw in the previous movies. Now, a lot of the reports, uh, a lot of the reviewers are saying that the CGI in J the new Justice League is hit or miss. Uh, that some of it is really amazing, it looks great, and some of it's the old CGI and it doesn't look good at all. So that could be an issue with this cut. Um, we also hear that he has better motivation now. So we've got a bigger story for him so that it makes more sense for why he's the villain and why he's doing what he's doing. We also are going to see Darkseid. Uh, at some point in the film, in some capacity. Now, um, that is something we have seen a bit in the trailers. I'm hoping we're going to see more than what we saw in the trailers. Um, but I, you know, I'm not going to get my hopes up too high. Uh, I do hope we do see more of him. But if we don't see more than what was shown in the trailers, I won't be super surprised. Because uh, he really, in this instance... He's, he's the bad guy, like we look at Marvel. He is the Thanos. He is the guy where you need to hint at him for two or three movies and then bring him in as the big bad for the, the best of the movies. And, uh, but I, like I said, I don't think we're going to see another one like this. I hope we do, but that I, I don't believe will happen. Um, now, we should be getting a much better story, backstory for Cyborg, and that's super exciting. I, I love Cyborg. I've always thought he was a great character. Uh, read Back in the day, reading the Teen Titans comics, uh, Cyborg is just, it's got an interesting story. Uh, his father being the, the basically the person that, that turns him into Cyborg, trying to save his life. And uh, so if we get more of that story, it's going to be great. Um, we do get a bit more of Flash and a bit more of, of Aquaman's backstory, but reports are saying that it's not enough to really feel like you gained anything there. It's just little bits and pieces, short scenes without dialogue that don't really add up to a whole lot more backstory. But Cyborg gets a significantly better backstory. I'm excited about that. Um, I've been mentioning the reviews. The reviews are out. You can read them all online. There are tons of them. Now, it's a little odd because if you search online, you search Zack Schneider's Justice League review, you're going to see all sorts of negative reviews. GameSpot gave them a horrible review. Gave them a 3 out of 10. Um... And super negative review in general. Uh, they do mention some things that are positive, And some of those things are things I've mentioned here. But other things they just bash on pretty hard. Um, but Rotten Tomatoes still has the reviewers giving it a 75%. Which is respectable for a lot of movies nowadays. I will for sure be watching this. It is four hours long, so I expect I will be pausing it more than once <laughs> and, you know, uh, using the facilities or getting a drink or going to help my wife do something or just go take a, a half hour break 
because that's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm definitely going to be watching it. I hope I'm going to get to see it this weekend. Um, the next one is something a little bit different and probably a lot of you have never heard about. But I, I just learned about it and I definitely want to check it out. Now, caveat here, I have not read these comics, but I am aware of them. And uh, there's some pretty extreme stuff going on in this comic series. It's called Invincible. Uh, it's coming out on Amazon Prime March 26th. This is going to be a, an animated series. Uh, it's from comics writer Robert Kirkman. Now, some of you might recognize that name from the Walking Dead fame. So uh, it's a little bit... So that gives you an idea, if you're a Walking Dead fan, you might have some ideas of there's some dark tones that could be involved in this. Now, it is a, a an animated adaptation. It's a pretty, pretty long-running comic. They had 144 issues. <clears throat> so there's a lot of story there. But... Um, just because there's a lot of story doesn't mean that that's where they're going to go. And that's why I want to check it out. I want to see where they're going to go with this. Um, it is kind of a bit of a Walking Dead review, reunion because we've got Stephen Yoon, uh, who's coming in to voice Mark Grayson. And Mark Grayson is the teenage son who's struggling with the fact that his father is a ultra-powerful extraterrestrial hero named Omni-Man, uh, who is played by J.K. Simmons, who I just I just love, and uh, I love his voice. Uh, but uh, it's kind of a coming of age. You know, he's inheriting these powers. He's learning about them. In the beginning, he doesn't have them at all. He's not even sure he's going to have them. Then he finally does get the powers, and he has to learn about them. So there's a lot of that. Uh, Mark Hamill is going to be in this. It's a little unclear to me yet who Mark Hamill is playing. He has a name. His name's Art. Uh, but I'm not sure how big a part he's going to play in the show. But uh, if you're needing a voice actor and you've hired Mark Hamill, well, that's not a bad thing to do. Now, be aware. Um, and this is where I said... I'm, I want to check this out, but I'm not sure I'm going to continue to watch it. Um, this is Image Comics. Image was an independent comic company, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, they're not DC. They're not Marvel. They were their own thing. And uh, their big deal was that the, the writers and the artists own their own creations. And because of that, they got away with a lot of things that... Marvel and DC would never have let fly. Um, so this is a pretty bloody comic book. It dealt with some pretty heavy issues. Um, you know, I expect the series is going to do some of the same. How deeply they dive into those dark places is a question mark. Um, now, the trailer looks more like it focuses on Mark and gaining his powers and you know, a young superhero team that he's joining and fighting aliens and fighting bad guys, dealing with high school drama, you know, all those things look and sound great. Um, in the comics, there was a lot more. Uh, we deal with a, a father who really lies about who he is and why he came to Earth in the first place. And we find out later that it's not a positive thing that he even came to Earth. Um, and uh, the dad actually does some things that are pretty horrific to other superheroes. Um, we, uh, it's, it's unclear as to whether or not the adaptation here on Amazon Prime is going to go there. Uh, if they do, I'm probably not going to watch it. Uh, simply because I like my superheroes to have some redeeming qualities. So, depending on where they go with this, I think this could be great. It could be too dark. Um, it might be worth checking out at least, if you've got Amazon Prime, it's probably worth at least checking out an episode or two and see where it goes. Um, 
I will for sure be checking it out and really quickly deciding if they go down some of those darker story paths, um, you know, I'm probably not going to watch it. Uh, now, the last but not least, and this is the one I'm most excited about, also coming out this week, is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And uh, we've talked a little bit about this in the past, but I just want to throw it out there again. I am super stoked about this show. I have wanted to see this show since since they announced it, and I was super disappointed that they delayed it. And uh, it was technically supposed to come out before WandaVision. Now, we know now that WandaVision made it, we know that, you know, the MCU's got a really good shot of doing a weekly series on Disney Plus and being effective. So we're going to see what Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be all about. Uh, we're going to see Sam Wilson, you know, Anthony Mackie's character. We're going to see Bucky uh, the Winter Soldier. We're going to see uh, as Sebastian Stan coming into play again. Um, the the exciting thing here is, I was concerned when when Chris Evans left and said, uh, you know, he's turning over the the mantle of Captain America and he hands it off to Sam Wilson. I was concerned that Sam Wilson. Uh, were Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan as actors, I was concerned that neither one was going to be strong enough to carry a solo Captain America movie on their own. Uh, they're both great actors. Uh, I, I have no problems with them as actors. I just wasn't sure if they were going to be able to stand up as solo Captain America movies. Now, bringing them together as a pair to do a, a weekly series is a brilliant idea, and I think it will be fantastic. It's, it's a different world than doing, uh, doing a solo uh, movie. And I, and I think it's definitely the best decision that Marvel could have made. Um, will one of them be wielding Captain America's shield by the end? I hope so. Um, this is looking to be kind of a weird buddy cop espionage opposite to tract kind of show. I don't even know how to describe it. You know, we've got these two frenemies you know, kind of guys, they're friends, but they're kind of rivals at the same time. Um, they kind of get along, but they rub each other the wrong way. Uh, and the trailers have definitely shown that and played it up quite a bit. Um, but here's my expectation. My expectation is they're going to be gently fighting over who really should hold the shield. Uh, you know, should it be Bucky because, you know, he was Captain America's best friend and uh, they grew up together and, uh, you know, he's got the, you know, the super arm and it makes sense. Or should it be Sam Wilson who, you know, has created this relationship with Cap over the past few years and they've worked together a lot. And he's the one that he gave the shield to Sam. You know, are they going to have... I'm thinking they're going to gently fight over that. But what will really happen is the government is going to swoop in, take the shield, and promptly give it to John Walker, U.S. agent. So we know he will be in the show. Uh, we know that Baron Zemo is going to be the, the main villain. Uh, we are... I'm excited to see him in the, the purple cowl. And uh, I'm hopeful that they don't play up the purple cow the way they did in the comic books. If you're not familiar with that story, um, Baron Zemo ha creates a super glue. Yeah, yeah, a super glue. And he accidentally glues the cow to his face. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happened. Um, I don't think they're going to go there because that's just such a ridiculous... That, that, that's so the 60s comic book villain, bumbling villain guy kind of thing to happen. 
Um, I'm sure they won't do that. But uh, I do like the cowl. I think it looks great in the shots that they've shown it in. Um, and, but we also have some other, uh, another villain of sorts. We have this terrorist organization called the Flag Smashers. And Flag Smasher is a villain in the comics. Uh, so we'll see how that all plays together. Um, my guess is that Zemo is somehow using the terrorist organization uh, but the terrorist organization probably thinks they're on their own. Uh, so they'll work together in some way and cause some kind of conflict. But uh, we'll find out how all that plays out. Um, now, I mentioned John Walker earlier. Now, John Walker is, is an interesting character. In the comics, he's a, a bit of a jerk, sort of, but kind of for all the right reasons, you know. He, he wants to be effective. He wants to do his job. He demands discipline. Uh, he's, his, he's got his own personal ghost that he's dealing with. Um, it's kind of like if Cap was a drill sergeant in the Marines and just mean. <laughs> that's, kind of, that's kind of where a uh, U.S. agent falls. Um, here's my hope. My hope is in the end of this series, we see... Falcon with the shield. That's my choice. That's what I want to see. Um, I won't be offended if Bucky holds the shield instead. But I hope it's going to be Sam holding the shield. That Sam and Bucky are friends in the end. And that U.S. agent gets to become a hero in his own right. And maybe even has his own shield of sorts. Uh, I would love to see that. I, I don't think that... John Walker is a bad character. I don't think that U.S. Agent is a bad character. I think uh, it, it would be great to see him come in and have his own ability and maybe bring him into the MCU as, a, as a, an Avenger in the future. And, uh, you know, probably not a leader, probably not the leader of the Avengers, uh, like has happened in some of the comics, but at least as part of the team. I think that would be a great way for this series to end. Now, that's all I have for us today. And uh, don't forget, you can find all of our social links, our online store, and uh, links to our YouTube channel at ChristianNerdsUnite.com. And while you're there, uh, check out our support link and uh, check out our Patreon or consider donating directly just to help us defer some of the costs. It costs money to keep the website up. It costs money to uh, to host our podcast as well. So any little thing that you can do can help defer some of that cost. But before we go, I do want to pray a blessing over you. Lord God, we thank you for hearing our prayers, feeding us with your word, and encouraging us in our meeting together. Take us and use us to love and serve you and all people in the power of your Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We'll see you next week. Please.